Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. So uh, stick around at the end of the video. I'm going to do a spark drawing, and we're also going to talk about uh, the 10 lakes, the $2,000 bounty on 10 different lakes, $20,000 up for grabs from Spark Energy for big fish out of each of those lakes for 2021. I'll tell you all about that at the end of the video, I'll give you an update. Uh, this video is with my buddies over at Jones Troll Motor. Uh, Lad and I, and then Taylor kind of jumped in at the end. We, we really wanted to cover, we've done a lot of electronics, but we've not talked a lot about trolling motors. So I asked him, what do you see that shows up at the shop that might have been fixed on the water? If you had known to do the troubleshooting, a lot of you guys know to do this stuff. A lot of us don't. Uh, we're not terribly mechanical. So Lad kind of walked us through things not to, things you want to be careful about not breaking on your trolling motor, but also then what you might look for and what the fix might be, especially breakers, he's going to talk quite a bit about. So check this out, stick around at the end, we'll come back and we will uh, do our spark drill. All right, so you know guys, I'm here at Jones Trolling Motor today and we were connecting the NEMA, which we've got done back there. But Lad and I were talking about sort of things, num things not to do, yeah. right? Yeah, sure. And also uh, troubleshooting at the lake before you bring it to him. So maybe things that you, if you're having problems, you could just check yourself. Even I could check myself. There's a lot of things he would know to check that I would never think to check. So you just mentioned something that you see as a, a regular significant breakdown on these trolling motors. Yeah, um, what a lot of guys do when they're either picking it up, they'll grab this sheath right here. And this piece of plastic here breaks really easy. Okay. Because it's not made to be a handle. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's not made to be a handle. And guys will pick it up right here and it'll break. Or the sheath will be in a bind and when they drop their trolling motor down, it'll end up breaking it as well. So just be conscious of that and know, don't grab it here and make sure this sheath is not in a bind when you're dropping it down. And that's not going to be a warranty issue. No, sir, that is not. It's, a, it's an hour, hour and a half fix because you have to take this all the way down you have to take this whole thing apart and pull this through the sheath down to here and take the whole foot pedal apart wires cables everything else just to get a new one back on there so it'll save you a lot in the long run just to be leery of that okay what else do you see guys what problems do you see get brought to you that probably could have been checked at the lake and maybe saved the day's fishing um Latch bar's getting broke. What's a latch bar? This is the latch bar. It takes literally five seconds to change it out. All you need is a hammer and a punch. Both ends will be broke. And a lot of guys will carry spare latch bars with them just because obviously 52 inch mounts, they'll have the steel latch bar. They're not gonna break. But on the 45 inch ones, they got the plastic ones and they break sometimes. And a lot of it deals with people hitting stumps real hard. And just keep your spare one in there pop it in and out just i mean it's a real easy fix and you'll be good to go so your trolling motor's not flying up when you hit the gas so so okay so uh you got one next door we can do a real quick demo on how to do that mm -hmm. okay excellent what else um obviously a big problem is when this pivots these pivot bushings on the inside of here you got to take the side plates off they they wear and tear it's just time on the water and they will tear up and break eventually um it's a real quick fix i can show that as well we, we've shown guys that how do you know to check that what what would you see or hear that says yeah you need to check that when this whole motor ends up moving side to side left and right really hard mm -hmm. that is a telltale sign 100 percent that either one or both of the bushings have gone out they always got a little noise do you hear a different noise yeah, it's it's a very defined, loud noise. Okay. I mean, it's a creaking noise, and you could hear it from here, and obviously up there because it's moving so much. But are you a believer in the uh, the? I think it's TH Marine makes the snap down things for your trolling motor, the the release latches. I've seen them actually in really rough waves. They tore one trolling motor up, but I I don't see a lot nothing really wrong, goes wrong with it. I don't see what it really hurts unless you're just absolutely abusing your boat to the rough waves. Yeah, because I know the Great Lakes, everybody has one of those latches on their boat. Yeah. Yeah. And then you said there's another way you can know that your bushings are wearing. Yeah, um, a lot of the times when the bushings are wearing out, we talk about this rocking back and forth uh -huh. right here. So a lot of, guys, a lot of times the, the bushings are out, 
and when these people are dropping up dropping the troll motor down or picking it up you'll be able to see on the side here there's a lot of rubbing wear and tear and it'll end up being black a lot of the times just because there's grease because it's catching this right here yes. i got you yes and it'll definitely be right there you'll be able to see it in that area um that is a that is a really if you can't really tell if it's shaking a lot not a lot right there guys we've got a video where lad showed us or taylor one or maybe both of you showed us how to fix that i'll put a link at the top so you can see how to do that but i mean it's it's a real inexpensive thing for you to do if somebody drops it off right yes sir yeah yes sir. okay and then uh, we also talked a little bit about guys trolling motor not working and or surging so it works really good when they first get it and then it backs off what's typically going on when you see that typically it is a corrosion or wiring issue a lot of the times these connections right here if you got a plug these connections right here or this one's a battery tender it's a really good plug but say you've just got a mar pack uh plug two prong plug check your connections on both ends it'll be a male and female um if they're dirty clean them up and you just take a steel brush to them yes yes and also at the batteries check them if you have the inline breakers like the 40 amp 50 amp 60 amp inline breakers um the little cheap gray ones i'd recommend replacing them because those go bad often i've noticed and just go to a good manual disconnect breaker um a lot of guys are saying their trolling motor is surging or or they're just doesn't seem like they're getting a lot of power then it's more than likely if your battery's good it's more than likely either your connections or your breakers those are the two things i would check first if you don't seem like your troll motor's getting power or it's surging uh, that's definitely one of the things that i see a lot people will say their troll motor isn't turning it's just not turning it'll power up but it won't turn left or right sometimes I always try to check my batteries first before I try to dive in first on the troll motor. So low voltage can cause steering challenges? Yes. Okay. All right. By the way, another question for you. Uh, are you qualified to use a box cutter? <laughs> well, I think I lost uh, my certificate the other day. <laughs> uh, uh, how bad a cut is that? You don't see it? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, about 10 stitches. Golly. <laughs> Yes. Let's uh, let's show guys how to change this out real quick. Okay. All right. So Lad was just talking about the uh, breakers and corrosion and stuff like that in the back causing some problems on the trolling motor end. So these are the small breakers that we're talking about getting rid of, especially 110% get rid of these. It's an auto reset. So if your trolling motor messes up on it, you don't know that it's the breaker that cut out and you're up here messing around with the prop, it's going to hit you. If this thing resets and comes back on and you're going to end up with a hurt hand. Um, this is the other one. This is more common now. It's mainly in smaller boats, not necessarily with big, you know, new bass rigs like this. Um, but you'll still see a lot of these in series on the batteries and, and as the main breaker. It does have a push to reset button right here if it trips, so it's not going to auto set back on you, but they're just small. They're flimsy. They corrode really easy. So that can cause a lot of problems that, you know, for 40, 50 bucks, it's easily solved. Now, these breakers are pretty cheap. But you step up to this breaker right here, which is what we put in 99% of our boats. Um, it's about $55, I think, no matter which size you get from a 30 up to a 60, I think. Who's the maker of that? Uh, there's a couple different ones. Marpak is what this one is. Um, there's, you know, Blue Seas and a couple other brands that are all basically the same thing. They just stick their logo on them. Um, but so this guy here, it's able to be mounted. You got screw holes in the corners here. That way you can get it up out of the way, mounted on the wall in the back compartment. Um, good protection on your system and also it's able to be manually tripped right here push in the button pops out the lever so if you had a lightning storm down the road while you're charging your batteries if a lightning strike hits the telephone pole blows transform or you get a surge back through your house if you've got this tripped it's probably going to still fry your charger in your boat but it's not going to fry your trolling motor your electronics you know if you've got all them ran through some kind of shut off device like this so instead of you're if you're out four hundred dollars for a battery charger you're not out three thousand dollars on a trolling motor and that breaker fifty dollars saved that whole thing now i so i know i talked to yoder about this in a video before do you leave your trolling motor charger on all the time i don't if it's going to be over a week you know two week period i do not um 
Minn Kota's precision chargers are very good about going into a float mode and kind of maintaining, but any other brand of charger, I don't trust their science behind it. Um, I've just seen too many problems with it over the years now. I've uh, like, you know, when I've been in and out of town, not with my boat at, my, at where it's stored, I've left my Minn Kota precision plugged up for a couple weeks at a time and come back and my batteries are plenty strong. But what I try to do if I've had it plugged up for a long period of time like that is I'll go and I will um, unplug it the night before let the charger, you know, all the lights go off, let it reset, and then hook it back up. That way it restarts its cycle all over again. That way everything's for sure topped off and you're ready to go the next day. Makes sense. All right, you gonna show us how to replace our pin? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, it's always good when you see a guy approach your boat with a hammer and a punch. <laughs> all right, so for this video, obviously this is gonna be a 52 inch mount. You can see by the four screw holes in the side, they come standard with the steel. Hold on, you just said something that now I'm curious about. So this same trolling motor and a shorter shaft comes standard with a different mount? Yes. Uh, it's usually a four hole, four or a three screw hole in the side versus the four hole. They're longer base. I did not know that. But I can switch them out if I'm in a bind. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and they always come with the 52 inch comes with the steel latch bar and the 45 inch comes with this plastic latch bar right here. Okay. Okay. And say you break this plastic one. Um, can you put a steel one in the plastic one for the other motor? Yes, you can, but I would not recommend it on the 45 inch just because it'll end up boogering your mount up a lot more. Okay. Um, and that, is that a technical term here at Jones Trotter Motor, boogering something up? It's a country boy term. <laughs> uh, so to be able to take this out, Remember the orientation. It's got a angle on it right here. You can see the angle right uh -huh, here. It uh -huh, goes yeah. down. If, that's only one way you can go in and one way to go out. So generally what I do is I make sure I got this lined up correctly. And oh, that's you can correct. see it on there really. Yes. Yeah, yep. Okay. So what I do is I take this hammer and a punch and I just drive it out. Well, it's kind of hard with a broke finger. Well, well, we get the idea. So all you got to do is knock this out yeah. the other way, spin it around and knock it back in the other way. Mm -hmm. And it does not have to come out of the mount to do, I mean, no. it can be under pressure to do that. And that is the thing when you pull, yep. I see, okay, so when I pull the cable, that's what the slide is right there. Mm -hmm. Do you typically grease this at all for dropping in your... If you notice it's starting to get dry, because generally come from the factory, they already have these pre-grease. Mm -hmm. But if it starts getting dry or a little tougher to pull, um, I'd definitely grease it again. Okay. All-purpose grease would be fine. But, I mean, it just holds that piece in place right there. Yes, sir. Okay. That's simple. All right. Give me that again. So, on the water, you know, a lot of the times you're not going to have a hammer and a punch, you know, to knock out a latch bar. I've done it several times where if i got a long pair of needle nose, I can line that up on that pin just like I you know, would use a punch for and just take my hand, you know, ball it up on those pliers and pop it several good times and that'll knock that latch bar out that way you can get your new one in there if you broke one. Like popping a hook out of a fish's mouth. Pretty much. Okay, cool guys. Okay guys, so again, there's 10 lakes. I'm going to read them right off the screen right here. Amstead, Fork, Rayburn, uh, Falcon, Cedar Creek, Palestine, Texoma, Conroe, Ray Roberts, and Toledo Bend. The Spark Energy customer or spark bass fishing affiliate which is 75 dollars to join uh the any either one of those who weighs at least an eight pounder submits it to share locker which you can do right on your phone there's an app gets it approved you will then go into this contest to see who's going to win for the year in each of those lakes it's not one it's 10 different lakes so it's twenty thousand bucks right now uh, there's been a nine and a half weight on Amstead. There's been an 1119 on Fork. There's been a 1056 on Rayburn. And those other seven lakes, there's $14,000 nobody's even tried to claim right now. We've also paid another six or seven, 250 or $500. So the way it works is you catch an eight pounder, you submit it to Sherlocker, you tell us about it. Once it's approved, it's 250 immediately. Catch a 10 pounder, it's 500. Catch a 13 pounder, it's 1,000. And then you go into this drawing. Now, that's in any lake in Texas. That's just not in these 10 lakes. But in these 10 specific lakes, which we picked because they're big markets near uh, Spark, in those 10 lakes, there's an additional 2000 bucks in each of those lakes. So 
it's a pretty amazing deal. And oh, by the way, we're giving away 250 every single week right here on Kinsmith Fishing. You know, it's funny. I see these guys on YouTube doing these uh, little drawings, and we've been doing this every week all year, 250 a week to anybody that joins Spark Energy as a customer or joins Spark Fishing. So empty hands. Let's go down here. Let's kind of go to the bottom. Let's see if we can find somebody that's been with us for a long time. And we drew Justin Garnett of Fairfield, Texas. Justin, you're our winner this week. Congratulations. Keep your eyes peeled for an envelope that says rewards on it. It's going to be a $250 gift card from your friends at Spark Fishing. And thanks for joining. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you soon uh, with some Rayward footage right here. Thanks.